Get the front seats to all the highlights on your World of Champions 2018 Dakar Rally. Proudly brought to you by Toyota. Segunda etapa, pisco a pisco. Welcome to Dakar 2018. On the menu in today's second stage, a long day in the Peruvian dunes with danger lurking around every corner. Concentration will be the key on this 278 km loop around Pisco. From now, the rally passes through the huge Ica district of Peru. At the heart of the region is the tiny village of Huacachina, which surrounds a genuine oasis in the middle of the desert. The lagoon is rich in mythology, and as a resort, it attracts tourists for its restorative powers. Here, water sports provide a counterpart to the adventure sports offered by the sands of the surrounding dunes. The lake itself even features as an illustration on the back of the Peruvian 50 sol note. The first two stages of Dakar 2018 certainly haven't been for the faint of heart. Between the sand dunes and the heat, it has been a gruelling start to this 40th edition. We are helping to raise her because his sack is very, very soft, uh, the sand. Yeah, it's my fourth Dakar. I couldn't see what was happening behind me and now, as you can see, we're really in trouble because we are right on the crest of the dune. We'll see if somebody can get us out, but yeah, this is definitely a tricky spot. We knew they had something nice planned at kilometer 30. It's been a hell of a start. Previously in the cars, the first taste of sand for 2018. Sebastian Loeb lost his brakes and over five minutes having to improvise ways to moderate his speed. I tried to zigzag to, to try and slow down a little by sliding. It's not easy. Superb start for American Dakar rookie Bryce Menzies in the debut for Mini's new two-wheel drive buggy, fourth quickest. Also impressive was Dutchman Bernard Ten Brinker, 
whose Toyota was second quickest. While all the Peugeots seemed to be struggling, Nani Roma was quick, maybe too quick. We arrived at a little dune, we hit the brakes too late and boom, a big moment. My heart was racing. Just like last year, the stage one win went to Nasser Alatia, who was not holding back. He put yesterday's strategy, but when I put my helmet, I forget what I needed for today. As a loop from the Pisco Bivouac, Stage 2 has very little liaison. All competitors will dive pretty much straight into battle for a very difficult desert stage. 90% of it is off-piste, so navigation is crucial. Now, uniquely for Stage 2, the cars start first, which means there are no bike tracks to follow. This means the dunes are a blank canvas. It's a big day for the co-drivers and, crucially, for drivers to listen to their pace notes. Yeah, I'm calm, a little bit apprehensive because it's not often like this. We'll see what will happen. I've prepared well for the stage. But for sure, it will be already the second day and it will be one of the strongest days of the rally. The disadvantages of an impressive time on stage one, American Dakar rookie Bryce Menzies is one of the first to enter the blank stage. His co-driver Pete Mortensen's notes will be critical. But that's a disaster, the aftermath of a big crash. The American crew have barrel rolled their mini buggy at high speed. Luckily the roll cage is strong, but that is a serious accident after only 6K of the stage. You know, Pete called it out as a, a big caution and I looked at it and just thought it was a little kicker and uh, just hit it way too fast and went end over end. <sighs> just huge bummer, first that car and second day and we're done, so just bummed, you know. It's not how I saw my dad car going. Back at the safety of the x ray service park, the extent of the damage is assessed. It's just my ego and my emotions are hurt, and uh, my co-driver uh, ended up breaking his ankle. So uh, my heart's off to him. He, he's the one that called it out, and I should have listened to him. Um, so we'll go back and, and work on our, our navigation, our notes together, and hopefully come back stronger in 2019. Well, we wish Pete a quick recovery. Another co-driver suffering for different reasons is Mathieu Bermel, while navigating for NASA Alatier is hit by suspected food poisoning and struggles to the end with sickness. Inevitably, this affects their time, and the overnight leader drops 14 minutes down to eighth overall. A terrible stage for Nani Roma and co-driver Alex Haro Bravo. The mini crew lost 22 minutes, having stopped twice en route. The two-wheel drive mini buggy of Flying Finn Mikkel Hirvonen seems to be on form on his third Dakar. Consistently making it through the stage, guided by German co-driver Andreas Schultz, they finish the day seventh overall. That is another huge incident. Argentine driver Lucio Alvarez has rolled his Toyota Hilux onto its roof in the slack of a big dune. Crew are okay, but that will take a while to extricate. Some more casualties of the dunes, Al Raji and Garafrilix Minis, both stricken, as well as the Borgvard of Eric Weavers. The best placed Mini is Argentina's Orlando Terranova, breaking new ground over this incredible scenery. A Dakar regular since he first competed on two wheels in 2005, he's fifth quickest on the stage, which keeps him fifth overall. Genial de Villiers spends today pushing. German co-driver Dirk von Zitzewitz calling the pace notes with a few tracks already left in the desert by Fuchs and teammate Alatia. Well, the Peugeot seems to be very, very quick. I mean, I don't know if we can go that speed, but uh, we'll see. You know, it's a long way to go, and there's a lot of things that can happen. Uh, we just try to get clean stages every time, but uh, for sure the Peugeot looks very, very quick. This Peugeot is Sebastian Loeb. You can identify it by its white roof. The engineers have clearly fixed his brakes as the nine-time World Rally Champion is flying, despite lack of experience in dunes this wild. His longtime co-driver, Daniel Elena, is adapting well to Rally Raid third quickest on the stage and that catapults him back up the leaderboard. Such incredible scenery, familiar to the yellow roof of Peter Hansel's Peugeot. He's very quick through much of this massive spectacular stage. He slows a little towards the end. But that's the red roof of Cyril Dupre and co-driver David Castera who are absolutely flying. 
second ever stage win in cars for Dupre. Good memories of Peru from his successful times here on bikes. I'm the kind of person who likes to watch, to observe. I like to have a good feeling for a situation, to feel if we're on a good rhythm or if we're too fast. And with David today, I think we found the perfect balance. So the day one strategy clearly worked for Peugeot. Road position on stage two has helped them to a dominant one, two, three. De Villiers and Terranova keeping them honest. And that leaderboard has an ominous look. Three Peugeots at the top, but it is Cyril Dupre who becomes the second leader of Dakar 2018. Nicolas, this Dakar is yours. He's at home and he's going to show who's the best. He is the hero of a nation. On home soil in Peru, all eyes are on Nicolas Fuchs. There's a lot of pressure and it'll be even worse after my good stage one result. At 35 years of age, Fuchs is taking part in his second Dakar in a brand new Borgvard. And the support he's been given by the people of Lima and Pisco is outstanding. It's amazing to start a race at home in Peru. I've done a lot of races in the World Rally Championship but always far from home. So to start here in front of all my people, there were so many people at the start, it was just as crazy on the stage. It was like a WRC rally. <laughs> Fuchs lived up to local expectations as early as stage one, capturing third place. For me, driving at home isn't necessarily an advantage. It's impossible to control everything and easy to make mistakes. In one second you can come off the track and crash. Reaching Cordoba is my main goal. I'll go stage by stage. I managed to come 12th last year, but improving on that result will be really tough because there are so many good drivers out there. When I started racing in WRC, my dream was to be world champion in my class, and I did that in 2013. Now I'm on the Dakar, and I'd love to win it, especially in Peru. Now Fuchs's goal is to build on his early promise and keep impressing, especially in the dunes of Peru.